A Bakersfield father is accused of kidnapping, raping, and trying to kill his 8-year-old daughter. Here at a 4911 call from Wednesday morning, July 27, 2011, when the girl's stepmother discovered her missing from her bed. The 911 audio was provided Friday by the Kern County Sheriff's Office. Have a listen. 911, what's the location of your emergency? It's Bakersfield, California. Okay, and do you need police or an ambulance? I need the police, please. Okay, what happened? My daughter's missing. Your daughter's missing? Well, she wasn't How in her old? bed. How old is she? She's eight. She's what? She's going be eight tomorrow. It's her birthday. Okay. I know it's. I know you're upset, but I need you to take a deep breath so I can understand you. You said she's eight? Okay. So she's going to be eight years old tomorrow. Her birthday's tomorrow. It's She's okay, so be July 28th? Yes, ma'am. She'll and be eight. What year was she born? Um, to, to, what, 2011, she's going to be eight, so 2004. Okay. What color shirt and pants was she wearing? Last night when she went to bed, she was wearing a pair of hot pink cheetah print pants, and she had on a little light pink shirt with a kitty on it. <laughs> okay. Is she white, black, or Hispanic? Huh? Is she white, black, or Hispanic? She's white. Well, she looks Hispanic, but she's white. Okay. She's got darker skin, brown eyes. <laughs> What's your name, ma'am? My name's Sheila. I'm her stepmother. I just call her father. Freaking out right now. She lives with us. Okay, Sheila, what's your last name? My name's Coriel, too. Okay. And you last saw her when she went to bed? No, I gave her a hug and a kiss last night. Okay, what time did she go to bed? She didn't go to bed until about 9.30 last night. Okay. Have you yelled out for her in the house? Yes, I've been screaming for the last five minutes. Okay, I still can't understand you. What was that? I've been... I've been screaming for her. I, I just, about two nights ago, we had an incident where my husband came home and he smelled smoke. He came in the room and there was a straightener. My my straightener for my hair was on her dresser and a towel wrapped in it. And it was smoking. And the window was open. open and me and my husband freaked out because we didn't know what was going on. I thought my daughter maybe got up and got the, the straightener, you know, playing with it or something and didn't realize that, it could do that, so we didn't really report it. So we were just like, oh, you know, maybe that's what happened. She was scared to tell us. Okay. Where's your husband right now? He's on his way back from work. Okay. <laughs> and I know her mother, her mother's threatened me and her to take her from us. Okay. Are any of the windows or doors open right now? I, I don't see anything. And that's the thing. I bought, I bought alarms. So like, she couldn't leave. Okay, and the alarm is armed right now? <laughs> no, they weren't alarmed. I would have heard them. <laughs> okay, are there any other kids in the house? There's four other children in the house. They're all here. They're all there? Yeah. Okay, have you yelled for her outside? <laughs> I did not. I just don't. Anyway, she'd go outside by herself. She's super scared of dark at night. Okay. And matter of fact, the last two nights, because of what happened, I made her sleep in my room with me. And she's not in here with me. I, I got up. My husband just left for work. I got up to see, check the house. I always get up. I check the house, make sure all the doors are locked, windows are locked still, and I check on my children. I went in here in her room, and I noticed that her bed was kind of, you know, like her, her blanket wasn't as usually as poofy as it usually was. There was a dog in here. She's got like a okay. full, you know, the big, Did, big stuffed dog. Does she know what the password is to the alarm? There's no password. But is there a code where she could disarm? Uh-uh. Okay. No, it's not a, a house alarm. It's just when the door, you know, the window or doors where the magnet gets pulled away, it goes off real loud. Okay. So, I mean... I don't know where she'd be.
and I checked the bathroom. I, I looked everywhere for her. Okay, how do you turn the alarm off and on? Is it always on and it just covers the window? No, you just turn it by a switch. All you have to do is turn on the little the switch up, and it, it sounds the alarm if the door is open or anything. It's kind of like a door chime. Okay, and it's still on? It wasn't turned off? It, well, when my husband left, he turns it off when he leaves. He turns it off when he leaves? Yeah, so when he goes out the door, that the kids you don't wake the kids up. And that's when I usually get up and I turn it back on. So you turned it on as soon as he left? Yes, ma'am. I got up. I turned it on. Like I said, I, I checked the windows to make sure all the windows were locked. And I, I came in here like I usually do. And because of the incident the other night, I turned the light on to check for my daughter, and I pulled the blanket back to see if she was all cuddled in her blankets because I couldn't see her head. And it was her dog. Her stuffed dog, and she's gone. Her stuffed dog is gone, too? No, it's just her, but her dog was there. Both her blankets are here. Okay, is anything missing? No, not that I can see. Okay. Yeah, her clothes are here. <laughs> I don't see anything missing, nothing. Her clothes, her, her even her little coin purse, everything's here, her glasses. Okay, so if someone were to go to her bedroom window and open it, the alarm would have sounded? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, she knew, and I know she came home, and she said she was scared after she seen her mom. I asked her, baby, what's wrong? She said, my mommy told me she's going to take me away. Okay. How? When did that happen? Oh, ma'am, um, it's been happening for the last... She's going into the third grade, and she was in kindergarten when we took her away from her mother. We had to take her away from her mom because they were sending her to school dirty, and when she peed her pants, I guess they didn't change her. Her mom's a drug addict. I know for sure she's admitted to me and Ray, me and my husband. And she told us that she was on drugs. But I think she, she mentioned the word heroin. So me and Ray had took her away from her mom. Okay. Is there any other way somebody could have gotten in the house? There's two windows in her in in the room, but both of them look locked. Okay. The back, you... There's a back door, but I don't see her going back there. We got some big dogs. Okay. <laughs> have you been in? Hmm? Okay. I just Do don't want to go outside because. Do you know the yeah. mother's address? I I don't know she was homeless last time we knew. You can find the That's last address That's another reason she her? was. The last address, uh, my mother-in-law just went to it. I'm not too sure. It's down the street. Okay. What's, my, her, what's her name? Her, her name. Okay. How old is she? Yeah, she, Veronica, I want to say she's 27 now. And, and she's got a... a He's her fiance. His name's Mike. Mike, um, do you know Mike's last name, babe? No, oh my God, my mother in law knows his last name. Is your husband there now? No, he's not. He should be, he should be pulling up any minute now. Okay. She was almost all the way to work when I got it, by the time I checked, and I got up and used the restroom, and like I said, I, I go through the house every day. And I just got up okay. this morning and made sure, wanted to make sure she was in there because of what happened the other night. Have you been through every single room in your house? Yeah. Yes, I have. I've looked for her everywhere. I've looked in my bed. I thought maybe she crawled in my bed with me. She's not in there. I even woke up my 11-year-old son because I thought maybe she got scared and got in bed with him. It's her older brother. They They have the same mom. Okay. And... I know, but his mom wouldn't take him because him and his mom don't get along. Okay. But that little girl, she she told that little girl, I don't know, numerous times that they were going to take her from us. And she told me she was scared. And I told her, oh, mommy would never take you. She's just saying things because she's upset, you know. I thought maybe she was just upset that we had took her from her and told her that she couldn't see her because of the drugs. Okay. When was the last time the mother did see her? 
<laughs> Last time my mom seen you guys, um, my son, my son's eight weeks old. They seen her. Um, she didn't even get to see him actually. She came over three days after the, my baby was born, which was July first. It was about that weekend, so around July sixth, I want to say. Okay. She came over, and she she didn't call us or anything. She just showed up, and she wanted to take the kids with her. So about she wanted just weeks to ago? take her daughter. Huh? So it was about seven weeks ago? Yeah, it was about seven weeks ago, but she told her, she came over, I distinctly remember because of the fact that she had, she wanted our kids, but she just wanted our daughter at first. And I told, I looked at my husband, I shook my head, no, because I had a funny feeling. And he said, no, either you're going to take both of the kids and spend time with your son too, or you're not going to see them. And she will, well, I'll take them both, I guess. And she was, like, real reluctant to, to, to take my other one with her. And then my husband said, no, never mind, I don't want them going. Well, I had asked her before, after she left, why didn't you let the kids go? He said he just didn't want them going, that she seemed like she was acting odd, like she was on drugs again. Okay. What's your husband's name? Ray, R-A-Y. And the same last name? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and what kind of vehicle is he going to be driving? He's going to be driving a, a 2010, I do believe it is. It's a dark gray silver uh, Chevy, 4x4. Four four. Okay, it's a four he should door. be home any minute? He should be home any minute by now. I mean, my mother-in-law just took off. She's driving a Mitsubishi um, okay. White Endeavor. She went to go see if if she could find my daughter at her grandma's house, which is down the street. Okay. Which is the last known address for Veronica, too. What was that address? Uh, I'm not sure what the address is. It's on Brandage here. On I mean, Brandage. I've only been there. Yeah, I've only been here. I ha I've been there a handful of times. Did I mean, your mother you know, your, her way over to that address? My mother-in-law was going over there to see if if she could see is there. Because that's the only place I could think that they would take her because they're, they're homeless. The last time I knew, they had bought an uh, an RV, the one that you can drive. They bought one of those, and they told us they didn't have money to be putting it in. Okay. Sheila, the deputies just arrived there. Can you go outside and talk to them? Yes, ma'am. Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. A Bakersfield man who kidnapped his then 7-year-old daughter, raped her, and left her for dead in remote field was sentenced to 34 years to life, Thursday in Kern County Superior Court. Ray Salvador Corral, 33, had accepted a plea deal in the case, pleading no contest to three sex crime and attempted murder charges in June. He would have faced multiple life terms without parole had he been convicted of all 11 original charges. Kareel's daughter, now 11 years old, was reported kidnapped from her central Bakersfield home on July 27, 2011 and was found four hours later, nine miles away in East Bakersfield. The child woke up under a couch and made her way to a nearby neighborhood to seek help. She'd suffered a severe black eye, swelling, bruising, and other injuries, some serious enough to require surgery. The Californian does not identify victims of sex crimes. The girl wrote a statement about her ordeal that her stepmother, who has since divorced Coriel, read in court. He ruined my childhood, the stepmother read. I honestly felt betrayed and lived a life I never wanted. As she spoke, the daughter, who was in the audience, sat erect, nodding slightly. Coriel, wearing a green prison jumpsuit, stood in the corner with shoulders slumped as the statement was read. His expression appeared strained. The girl's mother also read a statement. I just wanted to remind the court that there are many, many people who have been affected by this case, she said, her voice breaking at times. The family agreed to the plea deal because they wanted to move on, the mother said, but added, no matter how long he sits in prison, we have to deal with what was happened the rest of our lives. It doesn't just go away. It's going to be there. Coriel was sentenced to 25 years to life for sexual assault of a minor and 9 years for attempted murder to run concurrently. He was also sentenced to 6 years for continuous sexual abuse of a child to run consecutively. Coral will have to serve at least 85% of his sentence before he is eligible for parole. The girl and her mother and stepmother embraced after the hearing and the mother wiped away tears. They declined an interview with Crest. Defense attorney Michael Lucart said he thought the plea deal was equitable, all things considered, and that his client felt remorse. 
Mr. Coyle knew very, very well that what happened was wrong and that he was going to pay a significant price for it, he said. Supervising Deputy District Attorney Andrew Kohler said pr prosecutors were happy with the outcome as well. We're very pleased that the victim can now move on with her new life, she said. This was just a horrible, horrible crime. A horrible, horrible, horrible part of her life. The 2011 abduction was also a dark day for all of Kern County, Kohler said. Nothing that FBI agents, deputies, and paramedics involved in the case had all been willing to testify, even flying in from outside the area in a few instances, because everyone felt so passionately about the need for justice. Some of the deputies were in court today, she said. They wanted to be here. Coriel told authorities he had been on the far west side of Bakersfield with then his then wife called early in the morning to stay to say his daughter was missing from the couple's home in the six hundred block of Lock Loman Drive. In fact, mobile phone records showed that shortly after four AM Coral was within 1.6 miles of a cell tower at 600 Fairfax Road, which is near where the girl was found in East Bakersfield four to six hours after she was reported missing. During those hours, authorities put out word that a young child had been abducted and sought the public's help in locating her. After the little girl was found, the entire region breathed a sigh of relief. The next day, Coral sent a text phone message to his now ex-wife indicating he'd been sexually assaulted in the past and was suicidal. Authorities swarmed the house in a SWAT standoff, dragged on four or seven hours before Coral surrendered. Coral told investigators he had, terrible, he had trouble sleeping the night of the abduction and gone to his sleeping daughter's room. And everything went black, he said.